Well, how's everybody doing today? I hope everybody is doing fine. I hope everybody is feeling good. I hope God has been blessing you through the week. I hope that you receive these blessings and know that these blessings are from God. And with that, you ought to be giving God some praise and some thank. I want to give honor to God, my Heavenly Father, your Heavenly Fathers for all that believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. I want to say thank you, God. I want to say thank you, Heavenly Father, for your mercy, your kindness, and your goodness. Then I want to give Jesus some honor. I want to thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice you made for us that believe in you, that we are new creations now in Christ Jesus, that we have been saved and delivered from the punishment and the power of sin. And I can say thank you, Jesus, for setting us free in the name of Jesus. Then, Jesus, I also want to thank you for what you did to die on the cross and shedding your blood and going to heaven to be at the right hand of the Father. And the head the Father sent down the competent, which is known as the Holy Ghost, that now dwells in us. I want to thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you, Jesus. Because of that spirit, Jesus. Because of that spirit, now we can have a spiritual birth. I want to thank you, Jesus, that I've been born again spiritually by the Spirit of God that now dwells in me. And I want to thank you, Jesus, for everyone else that's been born again by the Spirit of God that now dwells in them. And that they are a new creation in you, Jesus. And because of you, Jesus. And we can't help but to say thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Thank you for your mercy, your love, your kindness, your grace, all that's in you, Jesus. We want to thank you. Today, Jesus, I just want to thank you for your righteousness. Today, I want to thank you for your righteousness. Because there's one thing you need to know. The only true righteousness that you will ever know, you got to be in Jesus. And that righteousness comes through Jesus. Do you want to live in the righteousness of God? If you want to live in the righteousness of God, you got to be in Jesus. You got to be in Jesus. So that means you got to be a follower of Jesus. That means you got to have faith in Jesus in order to be righteous. Did you hear me? That's the only way that you can be righteous. So the message I got for you today is titled Righteousness. It's titled Righteousness. I just want to speak a little bit about righteousness. It's titled Righteousness. And you know, I always come from the Christian perspective. I always come from the Christian perspective. Because the Christian perspective comes from the New Covenant. Or better known as the New Testament. So I got to talk about the Christian perspective. I got to get you to see Christ's way. You know, remember they used to be called the way in the books of Acts. You understand? So the way. Christ is the way. The way. We are the way in Christ Jesus. So you want to have righteousness, you got to have the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. So today I'm going to speak on that. Today I'm going to speak on that. So the title of this lesson, this message, whichever way it benefits you, I just wanted to touch you. It can be a lesson. It can help you. It can aid you. It can be a message that you can carry it on to other people. That's why it's such a blessing. And I am the ambassador of Jesus Christ. I'm here to represent Jesus Christ. I'm here to uplift Jesus Christ. Because it's all about Jesus. And we got to build on Jesus. Our foundation is in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for your gospel of Christ, which is the way to salvation and righteousness. Whether, understand this, whether good or bad, see, whether people are good or whether they are bad, we all want to be righteous. We all want to be righteous. We all want to be righteous. Or may I say right. We all want to be right. I don't care what it is. We all want to be right. So being righteous is being right. That's what really being righteous is out. Really being righteous is being right. But I'm going to tell you how to be righteous according to the word of God. I'm going to tell you how to be righteous in Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you where righteousness comes from. And it's in Christ Jesus. So you know, you all want to be right. 
I know everybody know that. Nobody likes to be wrong. So whether good or bad, we all want to be righteous, which means we all want to be right. So we have our own rightness. And if we have our own rightness, that means we have our own righteousness. Understand where I'm coming from and be blessed by the name of Jesus. So the question, you must ask yourself. So the question is, this is a question you must ask yourself. And it is, how do you establish righteousness? How do you establish righteousness? Do you know how to establish righteousness? I know you have an idea. Do you know how to establish righteousness? Well, I got a way that I'm going to tell you how to establish righteousness. And the only way that that righteousness can be established is through Jesus Christ. By you having, by you believing and having faith in following Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can have true righteousness. So how do you establish righteousness? You can establish right. You can establish righteousness. It's not that you can. By putting your faith in the righteousness. By putting your faith in the righteousness that is in Jesus Christ. By putting your faith in the righteousness that is in Jesus Christ. So the only way that you can really establish righteousness coming from the Christian perspective, you got to put your faith in Jesus Christ, who is our righteousness. You got to put your faith in Jesus Christ, who is our righteousness. If you want to be righteous, you want to be in the right standing with God, you got to put your faith in Jesus Christ. If you want to live a righteous life, you got to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, that's the way you got to believe in Jesus Christ. You got to receive Jesus Christ if you want to be righteous. If you want to be righteous. The world has its righteousness. Understand. The world have its own righteousness. They have their own way of what they consider right. But their ways is not God's ways. And that's why I come from the Christian perspective. Because their ways are not God's ways. The world has its own righteousness. The world righteousness is based on what they understand as right based upon what they understand that right. It ain't got nothing to do with God's right. It ain't got nothing to do with God's righteousness. The world righteousness or the girl the world righteousness or the world ways or right ways have nothing to do with God righteousness or God's ways. But us, we want to do it God's ways as believer in Jesus Christ. We want the righteousness of God that comes in Jesus Christ. We don't want the world righteousness. So we're going to let the world do their thing, but we're going to do our thing with God. So we can get into God righteousness. See, God has his righteousness, which is right. Oh, so otherwise what I'm saying, the world righteousness is not right. Understand me. The world righteousness is not right, but God righteousness is right. So which righteousness do you choose? Which righteousness do you choose? See, you have to, you have to choose which righteousness you will follow, God or the world righteousness. It is your choice. Yes, you have a responsibility. Understand me. You have a responsibility to choose which righteousness you want to follow. It's your choice. It's not on God. It's on you. You got to make a choice. Which righteousness you going to follow? And when you decide to follow the righteousness of the world, and you find that that righteousness is getting you in trouble, don't say, God, why I'm in this situation? Because I'm going to tell you, you're choosing the wrong righteousness. But when you do the righteousness of God, then you're in the right standing with God. And then you're making the right choice. And then you're making the right choice. So, which righteousness do you choose? I choose the righteousness of God. Now, you have to ask yourself, which righteousness do you choose? And you got to look down inside of yourself. You got to look deep down inside of you and see which righteousness you really choose. Because you say you got faith in Jesus Christ. I'm in the righteousness of God. But it's... It's something a little deeper than that. You got to receive it. You got to receive the righteousness of God that's in Jesus Christ. You know, the righteousness of, the righteousness of God is about good works. 
all through the Bible, all through the New Testament, from what I read, when you're getting with Jesus Christ, it's about good works. And that good works is according to the works of God. Not according to the works of God. Not, not according to the works of the world. It's according to the way of God. It's not according to the way of the world. So you have to be able to separate. So you have to be able to separate. The righteousness of God is about good works. It's about honesty. It's about honesty. Understand that. It's about love. This is the righteousness. It's about forgiveness. That's a form of righteousness. Faithfulness. That's righteousness. Peace. That's righteousness. Goodness. That's righteousness. That's God's righteousness. That comes through his son, Jesus Christ. And there's more in the Bible. All you got to do is take time out and get into that new and, and get into that New Testament and start studying the words of God and start meditating on them and let them become a part of your life. And you will find yourself receiving the righteousness of God that's in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit will come into you and dwell in you and it will help keep you on the right track and help you do the right things while you're living in the righteousness of God that comes in Jesus Christ. Understand me. But that's the only way that you're going to get it. Then, the righteousness of the world. Understand the righteousness of the world. See, you got to really understand the righteousness. See, the righteousness of the world, you can be dishonest and still be right. The world is all right with dishonesty, but God is not. That is not righteous in God's sight, but it's all right in the world to be dishonest. Deception. Going around deceiving people, telling partial, telling, telling part of the truth. Or setting something up to them that look like it's there, but it ain't there. Deception. In the world. It's okay. It's all right because they use deceptions in the business world. They use deceptions in different areas of your life. People use deceptions in their relationships. Then they wonder why it's so bad. But, but deception is the world way of doing things, right? As long as you don't get caught. As long as you don't get caught. Then lies. Lying to one another. It's all right. That's all part of the game. It's okay, but it's not. But that's where righteousness, that's right in the world. Lying. And then doing evil for evil. You can do evil for evil in the world. They all right with that. That's all good. That's the way the world believes. That's the way they see it. That's right. That is the right way to do it. You understand? He hit you, you hit him back. Evil for evil. He steal from you, you steal from him. Evil for evil. That's all right. That's right in the world, but that's not right with God. God said overcome evil with good. So we still got to be good to be doing what's right in God's eyes. You understand where I'm coming from? Evil for evil. Being unforgiving. That's okay with the world. That's a good thing. Holding grudges. That's a good thing. Yeah, I wouldn't forgive that person for such and such thing. Yeah, that person did that to me. Ain't no way that I forgive him. So, man, let me tell you something. You're doing the right thing. You know you're doing the right thing. It's okay. It's okay, man. You ain't got to forgive me. Yeah, I don't blame you, man. I hold that grudge, too. You understand? That person did something like that to me. I never let it go. I never be for I would, I would never be forgiven for that. I'm going to keep it unforgiving thing. And that's all right with the world, and that's righteous to the world. But it ain't righteous with God. So you got to know how to separate what's right and what's wrong according to the word of God, according to the spirit that now dwells in you. So if you want to be righteous, according to the Christian perspective, first you got to build your foundation on Jesus Christ. 
You got to put your faith. You got to believe in Jesus Christ. And you got to understand this believing. You really got to understand believing because believing is receiving. See, until you receive it, you're not really believing. And then once you receive it and you believe in it, then you start living in faith in it. And understand faith is about trusting and have confidence in what's going on. I, I have faith that God can do this. I got confidence that I can do it. I am persuaded that God can do it. I trust that God will do it. I know my God will do it. That's what faith is about. Believing is receiving. And then once you receive it, then you got to start living in it in faith. Then you got to start living in faith in what you receive and what you believe. Now, now, I believe it. I receive it. Now, by faith, I start living in it. Now, by faith, I start living in the righteousness that's in Christ Jesus. By faith, I start living in the righteousness that I believe I received in Christ Jesus. By faith, I got confidence in this. I am fully persuaded. Now, I just live it out. I believe it. I, I don't doubt it. I receive it. By faith. You got to have confidence in it. Faith is to have confidence in To trust in. To be persuaded by. To know. That's all dealing with faith. Do you have that faith in the righteousness that's in Jesus Christ? Do you have that faith that's in the righteousness that's in Jesus Christ? Because when you got that faith that's in the righteousness that's in Jesus Christ, you will still live, you will start living righteous according to the word of God, according to God's ways, and you will receive Jesus into your heart. Because believing is receiving. You got to receive him into your heart. That means in the core of you, not just on the surface of your mind. Yeah. Then, you know, the rightness of the world, it's all right to hate. Hate is a good thing. Hate is a good thing according to the world. That's the rightness of the world, but that is not the righteousness of God. So which righteousness do you choose today? Do you choose the righteousness of God that, that, that's in Christ Jesus? Or do you choose the righteousness of the world that's full of evil? I choose the righteousness of God that's in Christ Jesus. And if you haven't chose that today, I want you to choose the righteousness of God that's in Christ Jesus. I don't mean talking about I got faith in Jesus Christ. A lot of people talk about they got faith in Jesus Christ. They talk about it, but they never demonstrate it. Because if you got faith in Jesus Christ, that means you got faith in his righteousness. And if you got faith in his righteousness, that means you believed in his righteousness and received his righteousness. And now his righteousness will be coming out of you by faith. See, you got to receive the righteousness. You got to believe in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You got to receive that righteousness. And then by faith, you start living it out. Believing is receiving. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Understand that believing is receiving. Now, let it be a part of your life. Then the righteousness of the world is built on selfishness and self-centeredness. It's that simple. The righteousness of the world is built on selfishness and self-centeredness. Because it's all about me. It's all about what I believe is right. It ain't got nothing to do about what God says is right. It ain't got nothing to do about the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It's all about me. Self-centeredness and selfishness. And you live off that type of rightness. And a lot of times that self-centeredness and that self-centeredness and that selfishness righteous gets you in a lot of trouble. Trouble that could have been avoided. But if you live in the righteousness that's in Jesus Christ, blessings follow. Blessings follow. Blessing follows if you live. In the righteousness that's in Jesus Christ. That's why this message is about righteousness. Understanding righteousness. And righteousness can only come in Jesus Christ. You're going to receive righteousness through Jesus Christ. The Son of God. The Messiah. The Savior. The Lord. The Head. Have you made Jesus the head of your life? And when I mean the head of your life, I don't mean authority. At this particular time. I mean source. 
Is Jesus the source of your life? Is Jesus the source of your life today? Is Jesus the source of your life today? If Jesus is the source of your life, then I know you're living in God's righteousness. Because Jesus is righteous. And if he is the one that's feeding you, that means you're bringing our righteousness out of you. In the name of Jesus. The righteousness of God is built on Jesus Christ. The righteousness of God is built on Jesus Christ. You must have faith in and be followers of Jesus Christ. You must have faith in Jesus Christ. That ain't where it stopped though. When you get faith in Jesus Christ, that means you will be a follower of Jesus Christ. Just saying I got faith in Jesus Christ and not following Jesus Christ means your faith is in vain. <laughs> Hey, I got to keep it real with you. I got to keep it real with you. That means your faith is in vain. True faith. True faith is going to make you follow Jesus Christ. True faith is going to cause you to follow Jesus Christ. So when you put your faith really in Jesus Christ, you have to understand that you will become a follower of Jesus Christ. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, that means you will start living in the righteousness that's in Jesus Christ. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. You will start living in the righteousness that is in Jesus Christ. So otherwise, what I'm saying, the righteousness of Christ will start coming out of you. People will start seeing the righteousness of Christ in you, in your character, in your voice, and what you talk about, and all these other things. The righteousness of Christ will start flowing out of you. That's because if he's the head, he's your source. And if he's your source, that means you align it in. And you align it to work through you, through the Holy Spirit. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. <laughs> Don't never take Jesus for granted. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. <laughs> oh, you gotta thank Jesus for what he did. <laughs> you gotta give Jesus some praise for what he did. Don't don't, don't, don't undermine Jesus, you understand? Uh, you got to lift Jesus up. If you want to be right with God, uh, you want to be in the right standing with God, uh, you got to lift Jesus up. Uh, if you want to live in the righteousness, the true righteousness that's of God, you got to be with Jesus. Oh, do you want to be right with God? Uh, do you want to live in God's righteousness? Well, then you got to believe and receive Jesus. <laughs> And then once you believe and receive Jesus, you got to live by faith in Jesus. You got to live by faith in the word of God. You got to have trust and confidence and hope in the word of God. Talk to him, Jesus. Talk to him through your spirit. That's where it's sad. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. If it wasn't for Jesus, you would be true. But today, I'm here to tell you that you can live in righteousness. But you only live in that righteousness by believing. And believing is receiving Jesus into your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. You can be born again in the name of Jesus. But now I got to get to some Bible verses. Now I got to get to some Bible verses. Okay. I can't do this without no Bible verse. Can't do this. It's real. I got. I got to always keep it real. The righteousness of God is built on Jesus Christ. You must have faith in and be the follower of Jesus. First Bible verse. You must put your faith in the gospel of Christ. Go with me to Romans. Romans one. Romans one verses sixteen and seventeen. Let's get, a, let's get a little bit of this into us. Let's understand this. Now, you understand it. For I am not, this is Paul talking now. <clears throat> this is Paul talking. Paul, Paul, said, Paul, Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes to the, to, 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 the, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. So he said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Paul said, 
I am not embarrassed about the gospel of Christ. I ain't got no problem with telling you about the gospel of Christ. I want you to know that I stand up for the gospel of Christ, which is about the good news of Christ. Paul is not ashamed of it, and you shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ either. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. You want to get saved? You got to get with the gospel of Christ. You want to be saved? You got to get with the gospel of Christ. And that means you got to get with Jesus Christ, the good news of Christ. You got to get into the New Testament because that's where the gospel of Christ is at. You got to hear me. You can look everywhere you want to look. You can look any place you want to look. But it's only one place uh, you got to hear me that you're going to find the gospel of Christ. And the gospel of Christ is in the New Testament. It's in the New Covenant. Oh, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Uh, you got to get into the gospel of Christ. For it is the power. Is it, you hear me say? It's the power unto salvation. It's the only way. It's the ability unto salvation. It's the only way that you can be saved. To everyone that believe, to everyone that believe, I ain't talking about just thinking I believe, you understand me? I believe, oh yes, I believe, no, 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 I'm talking about a belief, and that belief is receiving, oh, bless that wonderful name, Jesus, and that believing is receiving, so to believe means to receive, do you receive what you say you believe? Because if you believe it, that means you're going to receive it inside of you. That means that it's going to be a part of you. That means that the Spirit of God is residing in you. And if you got the Spirit of God residing in you, I want you to know that you got Jesus abiding in you. I want you to know that you got the Heavenly Father abiding in you. And that Spirit that now abides in you, if you believe, and if you believe, that means you receive. And if you receive, you on your way. You on your way. You on your way. Everyone that believe to the Jews first and also to the Greek. And he said it's for everybody. Anybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're black, white, blue, green, orange, or purple. Red, it doesn't make a difference. And I don't care if you're a Chinese, a Mexican, a Puerto Rican. I don't care if you're black or if you're white. I don't care what your nationality is. I don't care what your race is. None of that makes a difference. You can all be saved by the gospel of Christ. Oh, bless that wonderful name. Jesus don't make no distinction. God didn't make no distinction. As long as you're a part of the human race, I want you to know that you can be saved in the name of Jesus. Salvation is yours in the gospel of Christ. If you don't know nothing about the gospel of Christ, now I'm telling you, it's time to go get you a Bible and read the New Testament. And I like to tell people to start off with the book of John, with the gospel of John. I'd like to tell people to start off with that so you can start knowing who Jesus is. The Son of God. The Son of the Most High God. He's your salvation. You know what I'm saying? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For then, then it goes on to say, for then is the righteousness of God revealed. For then is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. From Jesus' faith to your faith in Jesus. Even from the Old Testament faith. From faith to faith. It's all about faith. It's all about confidence. It's all about trusting. It's all about being persuaded. It's all about that. That's what faith is all about. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. So you can only get you can only get the revelation of God's righteousness by faith. You can only get the revelation. A God's righteousness by faith. But first you must believe and receive. And then you must act out in faith. Then you must act out in faith. You must trust. You must have confidence. You must have hope and all of this. That's faith. You must be persuaded. You must know. And then by faith. For, for God revealed from faith to faith that is written. The just or the righteous <laughs> should live by faith. The just should live by faith. And I can take that word just and I can change it over the righteous should live by faith. 
Because I'm talking about righteousness. And justice is righteousness. And justice is right. So the righteous live by faith. By faith in who? By faith in Jesus Christ. That means you put all your trust and your confidence in Jesus Christ. That means you already have believed and received Jesus Christ in your heart. Because he said you must believe in the Son of God. So if you believe in the Son of God, that means you are receiving the Son of God in your life. And now you must live it out in faith. That's why he said the righteous must live by faith. You want to be right, you got to live by faith. And then now go with me to, uh, it says for you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Understand that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Go with me to 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Second Corinthians 5, 21. For he had, for God had made Jesus to be sin for us. It don't mean like that, but I'm going to read like this. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So now, I'm going to do it like this. For God has made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Jesus. You want me to do it one more time? Faith, do it one more time. Faith, you understand this verse. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 21. For God has made Jesus to be sin for us. For God has made him, has made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Jesus. The righteousness of God, being the right standing with God, being the righteousness of God, doing things God's way, the righteousness of God. For he had made him. See, Jesus didn't know no sin. But God made him be sin for us. That's when he came in the flesh. And he defeated sin. Sin had no dominions over him. He defeated sin by being faithful to God. He defeated it. He defeated sin by being faithful to God. He didn't sin, but he made him sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. So you got to thank Jesus for all that he done for you. He left paradise for you and came to an evil, messed up, polluted world just for you, to save you, to make you right with God, to give you righteousness that comes through him. By faith. Do you have faith in Jesus Christ? The just should live by faith. The just should live by faith. And your faith should be in Jesus Christ. And your faith is Jesus Christ. You are not you are not righteous by law, for you, for you are righteous by faith in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3, 8 and 9. Go with me to Philippians 3, 8 and 9. Philippians 3, <clears throat> 8 and 9. Yay. Okay, I'm, I'm starting off with verse 7. No, I changed my mind. I'll start off verse 7. So let's go to Philippians 3, verses 7, 8, and 9. But what things were gained to me, those I, those I counted lost for Christ. He said he gave them up for Christ. You know, he was way up there. Yay. Doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb that I may win Christ. All his prestige that Paul had, known as saw at that time, he gave all that up 
He gave up his positions. He was high in the Pharisees. He let all that go. The riches or whatever else he had, the authority or whatever else that. He let all that go for Christ Jesus. And he said, he don't feel like he lost anything. He said, but that the things where but the things were gained to me, those I kind of lost for Christ. Yeah, doubtless, I count all things but lost for the ecstasy of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, whom, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. I gave up all things. And do count them but dumb that I may win Christ. And count them as nothing that he may win Christ. Jesus Christ was the sole thing. He was all about Christ first with Paul. That's what it was all about, Christ. Then he said, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. He said, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. See, the law was his righteousness. But he said, he giving that righteousness up. He said, I don't care about the law. I'm letting the law go. And that righteousness of the law, I'm letting it go too. He said, for the law, the righteousness which is of the law. But that which is through the faith of Christ, but that which is through or by the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So he said, the law couldn't give me righteousness, but faith in Jesus Christ do. So he put his faith in Jesus Christ to get the righteousness of God. So if you want the righteousness of God to rule in your life, you got to be like Paul. You got to put your faith in Jesus Christ. You got to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Do you have your faith in Jesus Christ? That's how you establish the righteousness of God. By putting your faith in Jesus Christ. Now go with me to Romans 10, 3, 4. Romans 10, 3, 4. For they've been ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now, understand why they could not get to the righteousness of God. This verse tells us. Listen to that. Let's do it. Let's do it. For they've been ignorant of God's righteousness. They didn't know about God's righteousness. That's what ignorant means. You just don't know. They didn't know about God's righteousness. Uh, so they, for... For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. So since they didn't know about God's righteousness, they went to establish their own righteousness. See, they, 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 they went to establish their own righteousness. They have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And they have not submitted and they have not given themselves over to the righteousness of God. They have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. And that was done out of ignorance. They didn't know no better. That's why I like to use the word. They didn't know no better. It was done out of ignorance. But it went on to say, uh, before, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. See? See? So now, so if you want to catch it now, catch, catch what it said. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. For Christ is the end of the law. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. So the only way to everyone that believe, to everyone that receive, for everyone that believe, Christ is the end of the law unto righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness, for righteousness to everyone that believe. To everyone that believes. So do you believe in Jesus Christ? Have you received Jesus Christ? Because that's where your righteousness is at. That's what you have to understand. That's where your righteousness is at. Your righteousness is in Jesus Christ. Now, when you live in God's righteousness, blessings follows. Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33. But it said, 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the way God wants things done. You got to seek the kingdom of God. That means you got to do things according to God's domain, according to the way that God wants you. The kingdom of God to me is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God's word. And that's what I let rules in my life. The kingdom of God in his righteousness. He said in his righteousness. So you got to do the righteousness of God. Because God said we was created for good work. If you're created for doing good works, that means you got to do good works. When you're doing good works, that means you're living in God's righteousness. When you're living by the good works according to God. Not according to the world. Okay? Not according to the world. In his righteousness. And all these things should be added on to you. Up above there, he was talking about all the material blessings that you can get. But if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, I will bless you. I will bless you materially. I will make sure that your needs are met. I will take care of you. That's in the physical sense, but I also want you to know that he also do it in the spiritual world too. If you seek ye first the kingdom of God, that's your spirit. That's your spirit. The kingdom of God is spirit. If you seek the spirit of God, seek ye first the kingdom of God, the spirit of God, the words of God, everything that deals with the spirit of God. You gotta be in the spiritual world in his righteousness, and then you got to live out his righteousness, not the righteousness that you want to live, not what you think is right, but what is right in God's eye, and his righteousness. And that's what you got to do. And he said, he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, all these things I will add on to you. So the things up above, the feeding, the clothing, and all that stuff, he said, I'll give you that. And he do. You ain't got to sit down and bad to God about nothing. You ain't got to sit down and cry, God, give me this, God, give me that. All you got to do is do his will. And when you're doing God's will and you're living in God's presence and you're seeking God first and his righteousness, I'm going to tell you, blessings follow. All kinds of blessings follow. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The message today was about righteousness and follow his righteousness. Not to wear righteousness, you'll be okay. I hope this message touch you. I hope it lift you up and I hope it encourage you. May God continue to bless you, lead you, and guide you. You can follow me on YouTube. My channel is Thomas Patterson. I also do some tweeting. You can follow me. You can catch me on Twitter as well. But today, all I can say is be blessed. Let God have his way in your life. Let Jesus have his way in your life. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. May God continue to bless you, love you, and take care of you. I want you to know that I love you and that God love you. And be blessed always and forever.